are you a mobile app developer? You know, are you trying to study your users and learn stuff about what they're doing? Are, are you trying to see, are they actually even using the app? Or are you just trying to find out, you know, trying to uh, tell pe journalists like me, oh, I got 10 million downloads, you know? Or, uh, we call that bullshit metrics in this industry. But Mixpanel has a way to really go beyond just the stupid vanity or bullshit metrics and really study what's going on in the app. Yeah. Who are you? Uh, I'm Suhail Doshi, and I founded a company called Mixpanel. Um, and a bit about me is I, I used to work at a company called Slide, um, and it's Max Levchin who founded PayPal. He started Slide, and Slide made uh, they made apps on Facebook for a while. Um, but Slide also had a notorious um, analytics team, and so they had eight full-time people working on analytics, and so that inspired me to actually go build Mixpanel, which offers the most advanced analytics platform for mobile and web. First of all, what does Mixpanel let a developer see that they couldn't see if they didn't have Mixpanel? Right. So it's good to think about how the old world used to work. So before mobile, there used to be just, you know, there's like basically GeoCities, right? A static page where you go from link to link to link. That's sort of how Google got started, right? And App, there wasn't so much really an application on the internet as much as just a web page. Yeah. So over time, how that's shifted is new technologies like Ajax, which really is just this technology which makes it so that like, it makes an app feel more, it makes a page feel more like a, an app, where when you click on something, instead of having to load a whole other page, it just loads the content right then and there. Um, the most prevalent use of this is like in Facebook photos, when you like click on a photo, it just goes to the next photo, it's not really, it's not really going to the next page. Right. Um, so things on the internet have actually started to shift more towards applications. So Quora is an example of something that feels more like an app. Twitter feels like more of an app. And so when mobile came out, um, there was immediate, there, people immediately were like, well, let's build applications because that's what we're doing on the internet. Um, and if you think about an app on a mobile phone, there's not even a concept of page views. Like you literally don't click a link and go somewhere. You you interact with it, you engage with it. So what Mixpanel offers people in the world is a set of new metrics that make sense for a new world. And what we do is we help measure engagement, things that people, the actions that people take in a specific application. And more to that point is that you can't really generalize a set of metrics, like there's not a general set of metrics for every single company, right? Companies want to track something specific for their particular business. And so we help companies like Path, for example, you share a moment on Path, right? Which is like, you know, you update your status or something like that. And they want to know how many people are actually doing that specific thing, not just how many people are loading their application. So mobile is different than desktop, right? It is. I don't carry my desktop around. So yeah. are you looking at location? They are. Like, are you using it while walking around or while driving or while moving around in the world? Or? Right. So what I think is happening on mobile is a different set of applications are getting built yeah. because, because, and we just had a conversation about hardware, right? And on mobile, you have a different set of hardware, actually, at a fundamental level. You have sensors, you have an accelerometer, and you have GPS, and you have all these other things. It's, yes, you can put the device in your pocket, but there's actually more data, there's more inputs that you can actually get and you can like digest and do something meaningful with, you can analyze. Um, and so on mobile, yes, like you can collect location information, you can collect um, other things like that. But I think the biggest thing on mobile is that the apps are fundamentally different. How people interact with those applications are fundamentally different. Yeah. Um, because some apps just don't work as well on a desktop compared to mobile. No, it's true. It's, well, think of Waze, for instance, which is a traffic yeah. app, right? A crowdsourced traffic app. I only use it while moving around in my car. Right. And so for a, a developer like that, are, are you looking at number of minutes that the app is open? Is that kind of the analytics? or? Or yeah. What, what kinds of things would you do for a developer like that? Because that's right. quite a different app than a Twitter app, for instance. So there, there's a set of there are a set of metrics in the world that are old, and then there's a set of metrics that are old but are still sort of translated back into the mobile world, right? Like app installs and time spent in app. And the reason why these metrics have sort of shifted to mobile is because, well, like the world just doesn't necessarily know any better. They just want to reuse some of the some of the same stuff. 
those metrics don't really apply to the mobile world because mobile apps are far more, far more engaging than anything on in, in a browser for the most part. Um, so these bullshit metrics like someone loading your app or like even time, on, time inside your app are not necessarily important. Like if you think about Google, they want you to get off of Google. They want you yeah. to like click a link and go somewhere else and find value. So it's not so much that time in your app that's important as a new set of metrics for, the, for this like new age these new age, this new age of applications. So instead of doing something like time inside your app, what, you really, what Waze really wants to track is how often people are using their application. With the whole Apple Maps fiasco, they, and because their app is reasonably good, right, or if, if not like significantly better, they really want to know are consumers that use their application, are they finding it very valuable? So what they want to know is retention. How often do people come back and use their application again? How often do people come back to Waze and actually get to their destination again and again and again? So if I use Waze once, do I come back and use Waze again and actually get to my location four weeks later? That's a better metric of success, right? Because it means that I found value through Waze and I continue to find value through Waze. And if they drive that number up, they're almost guaranteed to be a successful business. And is this the basis of this new trend called growth hacking? You know, hack, hack, you know in other words, uh, Every startup should have somebody really focus on how do we grow in the right way? How do we get new users and how do we keep the retention going up? Right. How do we keep people coming back to the app right. and not deleting the app? Yes, it, it actually is. So, so there's, there's two parts of growth hacking, which is like you know, the marketing component, right? And then there's the like, continuing to like, figure out ways in product to get people to come back and grow it organically just because your product is so awesome. Um, and so we actually had this video from the Branch Out guys, it's on our site publicly, and they have an entire team that is literally dedicated to figuring out how to optimize behavior yep. in a benevolent way and also figure out how to keep those optimizations in place. So they'll actually track, like if they make an optimization or an A-B test or something like that, they want to make sure that it doesn't just get ruined because they made a product update. So they have lots of things that they use Mixpanel to sort of monitor and make sure that their optimizations are in place, but totally is a trend. Yeah. Is Mixpanel available on all the platforms or just Android and all iPhone? platforms? So, so we Windows on. Phone and the new RIM that's coming uh, out. Or? It's all. It's we're not. We don't have an SDK for Windows Phone yet. Okay. It's inevitable. Um, but we have it on iOS. We have it on Android. We have it on desktop. Basically, all the places that really matter. Yeah. Yeah. No, th and that's. It's going to be interesting to see if it if, if what matters changes. But yep. certainly, uh, yeah. You, know, you walk too. around the, the world, you see Android and iPhone mostly. Right. Yep. Um, what are you seeing happen in the mobile world? What, you know, because you're right in the middle of it, and you're working with you know all sorts of cool developers. What are the, what are you seeing? A lot of people believe that mobile is going to be big and it's going to grow. They don't know the degree to which. Um, one question that people always have is like, you know, how how is the shift from desktop to mobile? Is it a zero sum game? Is it not? Um, and those are questions that we have pretty good ins insight to. Uh, so, one one good example of this is like. The question is, how are things shifting from desktop to mobile? And the way we see it is, people are using people see mobile as a means. It's a different medium. So, like some people find an app on mobile to be far a much better product, right? So, like it's easier to maybe like read your news feed on for Facebook on your yep. mobile phone because you're sort of bored and you're standing in line. It's an easier way to consume it than go to like type in Facebook.com and then consume it. Um, which means that like the thing, the shift from people going from the desktop to mobile, it's a very real thing. Like we we know it's a very real thing, but people are worried that like their business is getting cannibalized, especially if your business is based off of ads. That like it's harder to fit that like ad in your inside yeah. your mobile app, and so therefore you're going to make less money. So I think that I think that it's it's not specifically a zero sum, but I think that a lot of, there is a big shift because people find. They just find the product to be better sometimes on your mobile phone. So you're not going to use Google Docs on your mobile phone, but you will consume content like from Twitter uh, ultimately on your mobile phone. So that's one big insight that I think we see. Um, for our business specifically, like we, we moved into mobile because we had so many customers that wanted to use Mixpanel for mobile, and it just made sense. When a developer lo loads Mixpanel, what do they get to see? Right. Um, so the first, thing, the first thing that people should probably understand about Mixpanel is that we measure the individual action that someone will take. So we make the whole process of instrumenting Mixpanel and everything all focused around that. So the first thing a developer would see is just, you know, if you were, if you were, let's say, 
YouTube's not a customer of ours, but if, if YouTube was using Mixpanel, the first thing that we would show them is like, the, the first thing they would instrument is how many people are actually clicking play video. And, right, and, they, and they would see exactly how many views YouTube actually has going on in their application. That's the first thing that they would see. Could you do things like, uh, you know, if I, if I scroll through the videos, can I instrument that so I know yeah, so you can how many times people actually scroll down? So Mixpanel is very flexible. So being able, so we actually do this on our site. So we have, we have videos on our site that people actually will look at. And one thing that we do is we, we try to see, uh, we not only track what percentage of people hit the play button, but we actually see how far they've gotten in the video. And we learned that there's like a 20% drop off like at each 25% step. Yep. So, some, so for someone like YouTube, they would want to know, and I believe there was this metric that was tossed around a few years ago where people said that like the perfect time for a YouTube video was like around three to four minutes. And anything shorter than that or before that was like not as great as, like there was like this perfect time. And we, we threw that rule out a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have a, you know, a hundred million views either like Gangnam style, right? <laughs> you know? Right, so. yeah. But, but like learning, being able to learn that like three minutes is like the perfect part and understanding the distribution of something like that is something that everyone can get out of Mixpanel. And so because it's based off of events, every other part of our product is based off of it as well. So people can build a funnel off of their events. They can say step one, someone showed up to my page. Step two, they played a video. Step three, they commented. Step four, they signed up because, well, they wanted to comment, <laughs> yeah. right? So we make it so that every step in their funnel is also based off of events. Same thing with retention. So if you wanted to measure how often people come back to play that video or comment, it's based off the event. So we can say, once you've instrumented that one little event, we can say, great, now we can show you automatically that three weeks later, you know, 20% or 30% of people came back and played a video on YouTube again, um, which is also very valuable. So once you've instrumented that one little event, you get all this other power I, funnel analysis. How do I add Mixpanel into my code? What do I have to do to, to instrument those, like yeah. a play? So it's, it's similar to like uh, Google Analytics where you like, you drop a piece of code on your site. It's the same thing. We have a mobile library and you just put it in your app. It's used in production with like probably hundreds of millions of people that use other people's apps that have us in. So it's like very, like we're not gonna crash your app or anything like that. And uh, you, you literally instrument a little tiny piece of code and that when the action happens, it beams off an event to us and, it, and then we analyze it. Yeah. Are you looking at new kinds of mobile behaviors like, like walking around, like do you take a certain action at a certain place in a shopping mall? I, you know, cause I, I, I'm, a, I'm expecting that there's gonna be new needs for new kinds of analytics with mobile and certainly when we get Google's uh, Project Glass we're going to want to know why did they pull the app up at this point? Um, what's a good example of that? Like what's shopping. Like, shopping. Uh, okay. like there's a new app I just saw that um, you pull it out at a shopping mall, right? Yep. And you watch it as you walk through the mall and it shows you the Facebook items of, P of stores that near you within walking distance of you as you walk through a shopping mall. Uh, you know, how, how many steps do you keep that up, app up? You know, RunKeeper, for instance. Right. Like, what, what do they want to study? It's probably quite different than what Facebook wants to study right. in their app. Well, that's the thing. So it's hard to answer that question yeah. purely because like, purely because if we came up with a true set of like metrics, like, you know, if we just track the number of steps everybody took in every application, it kind of would be a bullshit metric because not every app cares about it. So that's really, that really attests to the, to what Mixpanel stands for, which is we try to track very specific things for a, based on what the business does. So maybe Runkeeper does, like Fitbit is a customer of ours and they care about the number of steps that you take, right? Absolutely. Like I use a Fitbit and you know, like the number of steps, maybe I, maybe I use Fitbit if I walk more, right? Yeah. Um, something like that. So companies like that will care about something like that. But it, the most important part about metrics is that businesses pick a metric that they pick a like single metric in, in many cases that will that they can literally bet the company on, but is specific enough about their business where it's not a bullshit metric. Yeah. Soon we're gonna have uh, these systems are gonna tie together and start figuring out who we are and what drives behavior. You know, right. at one p.m. I'm starting to get hungry, and and Rocky's starting to get hungry, and so yeah. maybe that is what well, drives us to open up food spotting. So you're gonna want to see do we open food spotting every day at one p.m. You know? Well, that's almost like the idea of like making data actionable, right? So you get like in the ideal, a crazy ideal world, like you get it, you ingest a bunch of data in, and then because you've ingested that data and its behavior that people are taking in the application, you actually do something with, right? So 
Google Now is a good example of that, right? Where like they ingest something and then they try to predict whatever you're going to do. Um, so I think that the world is shifting towards something like that because, because there's this idea of like big data and like what the hell does that actually even mean? Just because you have a terabyte of data and it's just sitting around on a disk doesn't mean like you're doing anything valuable with it. More data doesn't necessarily mean more value. It just it's good that you have more data because it makes it easier to to produce the right result. Um, but I think that people, I think the world is going to start moving to, it's less about big data and it's more about doing something with that data. Yep. Tell me just a little bit about your company. How was, how was it funded? How many employees do you have? Sure. Um, right now we have 19 employees um, and we, we've raised from Max Slepchin, um, Sequoia, Adrian Horowitz. We took a $10 million Series A round recently. Very smart people. Yeah. Very cool. Where do we learn more about it? Where do you learn more about it? Yeah. Mixpanel.com. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out and talk to me about what you're doing. It's awesome.